Welcome back. I'm asking today a question about is it safe to put our faith in God's Word? Today's title is God's Oath Backed Promises. Promises backed by oath. This is my yellow pencil, by the way. My Bible is full of golden promises and I colour them in, in, uh, in yellow. That's why my my yellow pencil is the smallest pencil. I've got loads of crayons, but this is the smallest. Yellow coloured verses, golden promises. Father God is very, very serious about his promises, starting with those he made to Abraham. He promised to bless Abraham. Now, these verses are well known. Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Just remind yourself of that uh, section of scripture. He promised to bless Abraham and through him all the families of the earth. Now, of course, he also promised Abraham a son. And when Sarah eventually bore that son, Isaac, at a very old age, when Isaac was a teenager, you know, he, he'd waited 13 years for this kid, you know, and when he was a teenager, he had to wait until he was about 15 or 16. And God decided to test him. This is what he said in Genesis 22. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, and go to Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I'll tell you. That's Genesis 22, verse 2. Now, Mount Moriah is in fact now the Temple Mount. It's in Jerusalem, same, same mountain. Now, if you read through Genesis 22 to verse 9, Abraham took his son saddled a donkey, they went up into the mountains and he made an altar, put the wood on it and bound Isaac with, with a rope and bound him to the altar as a sacrifice. He had the knife in his hand to offer his son when God spoke through an angel to stop him. And the angel said, this is verse 12, Genesis 22 and verse 12, he says, do not lay a hand on the boy. For now I know that you fear and revere God in that you've not held back from me, your only son. After Abraham had, he sacrificed a ram, by the way, but that's a little bit of a side issue. After Abraham had untied Isaac, the angel called to Abraham from heaven a second time. And this is the point. And he said, I have sworn by myself says the Lord, since you've done this, I will bless you and in your seed, that's Christ, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed my voice. Genesis 22, 16, 17, the Amplified Bible. Now you see a reference to this also, which is worth looking at, Galatians three sixteen. So Abraham, when he was offering his son and was willing to offer his son, God had promised, but he added an oath to the promise of blessing. Now, how does this affect you and I as believers today? Well, because of the new birth, the Holy Spirit baptised us into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. That's why in the epistles of Paul, we see the expression, in Christ. We are in Christ. See that expression, regularly. So the promise of blessing backed up by God's oath was made to Abraham's offspring. Now Christ was 42 generations down the line. You can see the genealogy of Christ in Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 17. The oath-backed promise of blessing passed through the bloodline from Abraham to Christ and because it went to Christ, it came to us. Because in Galatians 3, there's what the great verse is, verse 29. If you belong to Christ and are in him, who is Abraham's seed, then you are Abraham's offspring and spiritual heirs according to the original promise. Well, if that doesn't get you running around the place, I don't know what it is. We are heirs of the promise of God through the, uh, the, the promise that was made to Abraham came through Christ and we're in Christ. We got it. It's for us. 
This is why Paul and Barnabas wrote in Hebrews, Hebrews 6, to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who would inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan, he intervened with an oath. This was so that by two unchangeable things, the promise and the oath, in which it is impossible for God to prove false or deceive us, we who have fled to him for refuge may have strong encouragement to hold fast to our hope that was appointed to us. Hebrews 6, 17, 18, Amplified Bible. So when facing any problem, any giant in our life, like a giant of sickness or a financial need or other problems, King David wrote this. David knew how to uh, how to put his hope in God and keep it there. This is what he said in Psalm 55 and verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, release the weight, don't carry it, release the weight of it and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to slip or fall. Now and that's quoted in 1 Peter 5 and verse 7. King David maintained his hope in God all his life and the anchor held firm. Peter quoted, as I say, those words in 1 Peter 5 and verse 7. As Abraham's heirs, we can also put our hope confidently in God's promises because every one of those promises are yes and amen for those he has established and anointed in Christ. Now that's in 2 Corinthians 1. 20 and 21. That's also shouting ground there. You can shout about that. We can put our hope in God's promises, which are yea and amen. Let's keep our hope strong by following finally, final uh, uh, quote here from John, 1 John 3 verse 22. Let's put our hope and keep it strong in this instruction. We receive from God whatever we ask because, here's the conditions, we watchfully obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions, following his plan for us and habitually practicing what is pleasing to him. So from that base, we can now have strong hope and we can, of course, now join our hope to another Greek word, pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. More of that next time. That's strong's 4102 by the way.